Okay, there is terrible internet here at the hotel. And I didn't do my intro music or anything, and I'm trying to find a good light spot, meaning lighting, because again, I'm in the hotel room. So I'm, excuse the moving around. We'll probably do a better produced video on this in the future. I'm giving it a few moments to see anybody joins but I'm gonna be posting this link everywhere so people can watch it after the fact I'm on my little MacBook Air so I couldn't multi stream to Twitter and everywhere so I'll be posting it there I do see a couple people great I want to I'm on a tiny little laptop so hold on I'm trying to see if I can bring up the comments window so that I can see your comments if you make them it looks like I need to close Chrome, but I don't want to close Chrome. So I might not see your comments right away. And that will kind of suck. So I'll keep going back to check comments. I wasn't originally going to comment on this at all. And let me tell you why. And I know I got crazy hair. If you hear a lot of noise, it's because there's a party going on in the other room. And that's why I have crazy hair. We're having a good time over there. But I keep getting all of these messages. Uh, are you okay? And I'm like, why wouldn't I be okay? And so some people have told me that people that I'm now, you know, I think I've been justified for having on block are saying, and I'm like, that's not what happened. So we're going to talk a lot today about what happened. Um, but there'll be more to come because it, it is unreal. But the reason I was reluctant to make this video and the reason I decided to is because so many of my friends are like worried about me and that touches my heart. Thank you so much for all the messages. But the reason why I was reluctant to make this video is there are a lot of wonderful people here in Michigan. A lot of them are in the room next door that might, uh, whose noise might interrupt this video. But there are also a significant contingent of not good people. But I didn't want to mention this particular convention by name because I respect the good people so much. But the untruths and absolute fraud that have been perpetrated by the bad people have made it inevitable that I had to do a video by name. So let me say, first of all, I've been in the party 10 years. I've been at a lot of conventions. This convention, at least the morning session, and we'll talk why the afternoon session, which I didn't see all of it, but a lot of illegal shit was done. When I say illegal, I don't mean pursuant to the law of the state. I mean pursuant to bylaws, things like that. This convention is by far the worst convention I have ever seen. And I've been to a lot of conventions, including the one in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which until today was the worst convention I had ever seen. And at that convention, someone was literally assaulted. And I still think this one was worse. The people who were acting the way they were acting ought to be thoroughly ashamed of themselves. But I am grateful that nobody's neck was bitten and that everyone kept their clothes on because for some reason a certain contingent of people in Michigan seem to think that when you're unhappy uh, that you should just strip. I mean, we saw that in 2016 with James Weeks on the national debate stage. That was from Michigan. Um, funny enough, we're in Flint. So maybe the people here have that were misbehaving drank too much of the water. I don't know. But I'm gonna, we need to go to the beginning to get to what's being said about me. And what's being said about me is like part of, I won't even say the truth, it's part of the story. But you know what happens when people only tell you part of the truth? That means they're fully lying when they refuse to give the entire context. So here we go. And I have video, mama has receipts, by the way. So it opened up with the rightful chair, Andrew Chatterton saying, for the peace of this convention, and also because I want to be able to debate freely, I am passing the gavel to my vice chair. 
Um, the vice chair is Leah Daly. She is a sweetheart. No, wonderful woman. The way some delegates at this convention harassed and abused her is beyond, beyond comprehension. They continually interrupted her. They continually got out of order, rude and obscene from their chairs. They had zero respect for rules and their view, the rules were whatever they say it was. They did not believe in any rights of any kind of minority. They were like, we have the numbers. Um, so, you know, obviously if you have the numbers, you can carry legal votes. No matter if somebody likes it or not, you've done it fair and square. But just because you have the numbers doesn't mean you get to act up and abuse the chair. Just because you know that your fellow conspirators will not vote to remove you. That does not make it right. And I think at one point, maybe five to seven points of order were pending at one time. And they were not legitimate points of order. Let's have a little parliamentary lesson here. And I know Alicia Matson has harped on this a lot. And the past LNC has uh, had this problem too. A point of order is when you think the chair is wrong about a rule, not when you think the rule itself is just a rule you don't like. If the chair is clearly interpreting the rules and applying them properly, it doesn't matter that you don't like the results. But when a rule came up that they didn't like, they would call a point of order because they're like, we've got a majority. We could just say, screw the rules. And that's not how it works. So Leah properly refused to hear certain points of order as dilatory. Let me tell you what one of those points of order were. Uh, which motion has precedence over another motion? That is clearly spelled out in Roberts. There is no room for interpretation. There's a flow chart at the end of the book that tells you which motions have precedence over others. And she properly ruled, and I believe that a motion to amend has a higher precedence than a motion to postpone indefinitely. Point of order. What's your point of order? That is completely dilatory, but that's what they did all morning. Any single thing, and she was a sweetheart, that she tried to do, they called a point of order on. And they didn't like that she came over to consult with me, who actually knows these things. And claimed all kinds of bias. But what's funny cl for claiming bias, there was a time when there's a particular delegate that I'm not particularly fond of, I'm not going to name names here, uh, called the question. And she didn't recognize that he called the question and moved on. And I said to her, protecting the rights of this delegate that I don't particularly care for, excuse me, that member legitimately called the question. You need to take a vote on calling the question. I am unquestionably fair when I am serving as parliamentarian. The fact is they didn't like that she kept coming over to consult me. That is the job of the chair and the parliamentarian. But this particular contingent of folks wanted to leave her helpless and with no advice. So they started getting really restless about the fact that I kept showing her the rules. Let me tell you another rule that it's completely dilatory to accept a point of order on. Anyone who is in Reno should know this, but I'm going to be doing a whole show on this so that people who come to DC understand this. When there are not delegates yet, when you are considering a credentials report, it is in order to amend the report to strike de uh, delegates, even a group of delegates from the report, as long as the, the group are all being considered for striking or you move to strike them on the same grounds and they're part of the same constituent unit. So there was a motion to strike the delegates from a certain county. 
um, because they did not properly notice their convention. And in fact, they admitted on the mic they didn't properly notice their convention. But we're just like, oopsies happen. I'm sorry. If oopsies happen with notice, your convention is invalid. It's as simple as that. We had this just happen in Colorado. Oopsies happen. So you admitted that you didn't give proper notice. Okay, whatever. But the chair ruled that the disputed delegates do not get to vote on their own dispute. Point of order. What's the basis for your point of order? It's absolutely clear in Roberts. Disputed delegates do not get to vote on their own dispute. There's no room for interpretation of that rule in Roberts. And they didn't even try to interpret it, except for, I don't think that's fair. Well, there's a lot of things I don't think are fair in life. These are the rules you adopted. So she refused to hear that point of order, rightly. But they didn't like that she wouldn't have known that rule if I didn't tell it to her. So there were grumblings that they didn't want me as parliamentarian. They came up with all kinds of excuses, alleging bias when I, I am not. The, the person that I have told the chair is out of order more times than anyone in the entire party is Michael Heiss. And he will tell you that because I did it last Pennsylvania convention. And he had that look again. He's like, you always do this to me. I go, you're sorry, your motion's out of order. I show no favoritism. And you can try to slander me all you want, but anyone who has worked with me knows that. So anyway, so they were, they were getting unhappy because they didn't like that Leah was getting professional advice. So then there were grumblings uh, that we don't want, we don't want her here as, as parliamentarian. Well, I wasn't advising the convention. It doesn't, this may sound harsh to say, but it doesn't matter because I wasn't working for them. I was advising the chair. The chair makes rulings. The parliamentarian makes no rulings. They only give advice. And the parliamentarian serves at the pleasure of the chair. The body, unless your bylaws say otherwise, the body has no say in who the convention parliamentarian is. No say at all. And particularly when the parliamentarian is a member of the society. I am a member of the Libertarian Party of Michigan. So they could have, have had grounds to exclude non-members from their convention, and that would have been a backdoor way of getting rid of me. But I'm a member, so they couldn't do that. So they were complaining, completely out of order complaints. And then when Leah informed them that the parliamentarian serves at the pleasure of the chair, it is not the convention body's decision to make. Um, I called her over. Give me one second because I want to see if there are any comments to address. Um, let me see here. God, this is so small. That's what she said. Hold on. Oh, Justin. I'm going to put Justin's comments. Uh, oh, did it add it to the broadcast? Yeah, it is this bullshit. It gets worse, Justin. It gets worse. You will not believe. I underestimated the badness of certain people here. Like literally, I was shocked and it takes a lot to shock me. But first we'll deal with this thing. So I started hearing grumblings and motions that weren't recognized yet to remove the convention chair. Because if they remove the convention chair, then the parliamentarian goes along with them because whoever they would have elected as pro tem wouldn't have wanted me to advise them. And that is perfectly okay. So I called the chair over. And by the way, I got the consent of the chair to do this video because I'm going to relate a private conversation I had with her. And she gave me full consent to disclose all of this. And I said, Leah, they are going to remove you because they are unhappy that I'm advising you. You are a wonderful person. I want to spare you that embarrassment because even though there's no grounds to remove you, it's obvious it's just spite. I understand how that can hurt because I've been removed from things before. And I said, Leah, I don't want to see that happen to you. So I'm asking your consent can I just voluntarily step down 
so that they don't remove you in order to try to get at me. And she said, yes, I would like you to do that. And we had an understanding. It was not because she was unhappy with anything I was saying, not because the convention has any right to say who the parliamentarian is. It was to avoid a removal motion of her. She did not deserve that. So I voluntarily stepped down as, I got an itch, sorry, this makeup is driving me crazy. So I voluntarily stepped down as convention parliamentarian out of compassion for the convention chair. I bet that's not what you heard, is it? And be, but because you had people on the floor who didn't care about, my hair is so freaking crazy, um, who, who didn't care about rules and really wanted to just stick it to me, they made a, a motion to remove the convention parliamentarian. Well, that motion's completely out of order for two reasons. One, it's not the prerogative of the convention who advises the chair. It's the chair's prerogative. You know, conventions can have their, members can have their own parliamentarian. They could have brought a separate parliamentarian if they wanted to, and they did not. So that motion is completely out of order, but let's pretend it was in order. I already resigned. Before the motion was even called to be voted on, I already picked up my stuff and went and sat out in the audience. So it was a moot motion. Motions, you cannot make a motion who's passing it has the same effect as not making the motion at all. That's, compl that's also black letter Roberts. So the motion was completely out of order. But because I still wasn't sitting there anymore, I couldn't advise her of that. And Leah, who just wants to be nice, got flustered. And she allowed the motion to go forward, even though I had already resigned. But then she realized that was an error. And when she came back from lunch, she informed the convention that I was not fired. I was not removed. I voluntarily resigned. I bet you that isn't what you were told. You want to know what you call people who tell you things that aren't the whole story? You call them liars and you don't trust them. But mama has receipts. So I'm going to play for you if the sound will come through. Um, the I videoed on my phone and it's on my YouTube channel, the speech that the chair gave correcting any misunderstanding. So anyone who's still making these claims that I was so-called fired after this, they're just liars. And it shouldn't be a surprise because the same cadre of people have been lying since day one. They are doing Alinsky rules for radicals where they just cry and complain the loudest. And people who haven't heard both sides of the story just believe them. And I have to tell you, if I only heard one side, I'd be mad too. But there's a proverb that says, one man seems right until the other argues his case. Now you're hearing the other side of the story. So let's see if I can pull this up. Because I'm on this little laptop that I've never streamed on before, we'll see whether it's possible. But I'd like to check comments again first. Again, I apologize, I'm doing this from the hotel. Okay, um, no, no new ones, but let me find the video on my channel that I would like to show you. And, um, oh, such limited real estate on this laptop. Okay, wait, hold on. Um, I want to pause that. And let's see. Okay, give... Please have patience with me. I'm looking for Ecamm again. Okay, so let us let me pull up my sound options. Again, I literally have never streamed on this laptop before. Um, no, I'm looking to make sure. Okay, you guys are just going to have to tell me if you can hear this video once I play it. Give me one second again to try to pull up my soundboard. Um, don't save that. Part of the problem is I have too many windows open as well. I'm closing out Filmora. That's my video editing program. So hold on. Great. I'm getting the B 
beach ball window, sound levels. That's what I'm looking for. So I will should be able to see if you can hear the video. If you can't, I'll just give you a link to it. It's right on my channel. But let's see um, if we can play this. So let me pull this up on my screen. One second here. Okay, let me share my screen. Ecamm Live. Share. Uh, install system audio. Okay, let's install system audio. Oh, no, I have to install it. Okay, I am not going to be able to play this because system audio is not installed. So let's go back to the camera. Um, I know what I can do. We'll play it on my phone. Um, one second here. We'll play it on my phone and hopefully you guys will be able to hear it through the speakers because I do want to show you receipts and I want you to be able to ask me questions. This might not work well. If not, you can find it again on my, so let me pull up YouTube. Oh, actually I can pull up my Twitter account because I also posted this video on my Twitter account. Though some people are saying they're getting private videos. It's not private. I don't know why you can't see it, but let me put my volume all the way up and let's see. The, the, uh, the video is not really important. It's the audio, but let's see if we can get you guys to see this. Okay, it's loading. Terrible. Oh, I'm even getting private. This is so bizarre. Hold on. This video should not be private. And this is maybe why people can't see it. So YouTube Studio. Um content, videos. It says it's public. This is so weird. God damn it. I want, well, oh, you know, want to know something? When there's a will, there's a way. I have it recorded on my phone. We don't even need to go to YouTube. We just need to go to my phone and find it in the albums. Okay, this should be it. Let me see how much I can get the volume up. Okay, why? No. Okay. George, this is your receipt. Okay, there's a credentials report first. In a moment, we're gonna have an update. That's Leah. Credentials report, and then we will resume business. So, oh, one moment. I wanted to give context, so I'm sorry it's longer than it needs to be. Okay, we have a credentials report ready. Rich, McLean, come on up. Okay, so the updated uh, delegate report is 106 total delegates. So the majority is 54, two thirds is 71, and seven eighths is 93. So yeah, majority is 54. Okay, we're gonna. Resume business. You can hear me talking because I'm in the audience at this point. One moment. One fifty-one. At this time. Before we resume necessarily with the um, convention rules, I do have something to say. I want to clarify that I allowed an improper motion earlier. It was improper to allow a vote for the removal of the parliamentarian. She voluntarily stepped down. She was not removed. And it was improper of me to hold that vote. Here are rude I feel at this time, considering the business this morning, that this convention body is too unruly. 
It's preventing me from effectively conducting our business. And I'm asking the body to re replace me. And I'm looking for a motion to do so. Okay, that's really all of the relevant thing. She is an honorable person. She realized they were just going to steamroll her the entire time. They denied her professional advice. And she would not countenance that with her chairing it. So before there was ever any kind of vote on any kind of motion, I already, with the consent of the chair, uh, voluntarily stepped down so that she would not get a removal vote because I care about her. That's what really happened. And the way people are twisting an act of compassion and friendship is just really, really disgusting. These are not good people. I'm not talking about everyone in that room because there are so many good people um, here, which is why I was reluctant to do this video because I do not want to paint everybody with the same brush. And I do see the private message, um, JJ, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look um, when I'm done with this video. So, um, you know, Leah and I had a good talk. Like, I'm like, Leah, it's not your fault that people are lying about me. It's not your fault. You are a good and honorable woman. Other people in that convention need her just the amount of honor she has in her pinky toe. And it was very honorable of Andrew Chatterton to see at the beginning that him being chair would have been a distraction in passing the gavel to his vice chair. Now, later in the afternoon, business went smoothly because they installed somebody that they agree with. So they're trying to use that to say, look, Leah was a bad chair. No, you were bad delegates that constantly interrupted and heckled her, and you didn't do that to the other guy. It's not on her. The way she behaved is she behaved with grace and honor, and you could learn something from her. But let's talk about what happened in the afternoon. I'm not going to talk too much about it because it will start getting into potential legal issues and other things I can't discuss. But those of you who know the history of what happened in Michigan, um, I'll give you a brief recap. Very brief. At a special convention a couple of years ago, they brought a motion to remove the chair. At a special convention, I think someone's at my door. Um, who's there? Nope, not, not my door. Um, so at a special convention, they, uh, they brought a motion to remove Andrew Chatterton. Um, and it passed. However, it wasn't properly noticed. At a special convention, just like a special board meeting, you can only hear items for which proper notice is given. Everyone should know that. So Andrew appealed it to the Michigan Judicial Committee and the Mich Michigan Judicial Committee uh, voided that, uh, that motion because it completely violated notice requirements. Notice requirements are sacrosanct. So they already know from their own judicial committee that you can't bring unnoticed removal motions to a special convention. Today's convention was a special convention. Guess what they did again? They voted, allegedly, I'm going to say voted because the vote is void. They voted to remove the entire board and replace it with the fraud board. Like that is even more fraudulent than I could even imagine. I thought they would try to remove Andrew again. I expected that. This is like light years, like you shocked me and I am difficult to shock. So they blatantly again went against a standing judicial committee order. Now, obviously someone is going to appeal this again. 
there were probably about eight other appealable bad actions that they did that I'm not going to get into because I don't know if they're actually going to be appealed. I know that they they should be. And um, I, you know, I'm not going to be filing any appeals for, for various reasons, but even though I'm a member and I could, uh, I don't know if the other ones will be appealed, but definitely that absolutely illegal vote will be appealed. Like, I don't use this word lightly, but that has to be one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. Well, actually, I didn't see it in person because I was in my room. I heard about it later. But let's just say that I have heard occur at a convention. So basically, they have learned nothing. They don't care about bylaws. We are dealing with agents of chaos without honor. This isn't a mere disagreement. And I see Angela's calling me. I'm going to have to call her back in a minute Um, because we're almost done for tonight. Um, this isn't a mere disagreement over something. This is just outright fraud because there is a delegate there who's on the opposite side of a lot of issues with me that I said, you know what? I believe you absolutely act in good faith. You made some arguments which were just procedurally wrong at the microphone. Um, when you got a moment, let's sit down and talk about it. Okay. But that's not everybody. So they just basically just tried the same Alinsky yelling and screaming and blatantly violating their bylaws with an absolutely illegal motion. That will be dealt with through their judicial committee. I mainly wanted to deal with the lies that they're saying about me because this is the type of people you are dealing with. When you oppose them, they engage in the politics of personal destruction. Do you want to know what Mike Saliba did? He shared a meme that literally accused the chair of being a pedophile. That is the most disgusting thing that you could ever accuse somebody of being. And that's that's the very person that they think illegally They just somehow magically reinserted his chair. I don't, if, if somebody made a meme of any of these bad actors accusing them of being a pedophile with absolutely no proof, I would be condemning it such a, so hard. But this is what's going on here. And it is a shame for the good people that are here because there are some very good people here. But now you know the whole story. And if you choose to continue to support liars and frauds, that's on you. All right, I'm gonna go back and hang out with the good people of Michigan who have been wonderful to me. Have an awesome evening.